Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be going through this MCAT tracking spreadsheet and explaining how it works in depth. This spreadsheet is how I keep everything organized while I study for the MCAT. I'm someone who really needs a good organization system and this spreadsheet has given me that and made the MCAT process overall a lot less overwhelming for me. So let's jump right in and I'll show you how I use it. First, let's talk about the overall functions and different components of the spreadsheet. The main dashboard is the first tab of the spreadsheet and it is also the page you might find yourself checking the most often. It updates with visuals and percentages as you progress through content review, cars passages, and practice questions. At the top of the dashboard, you will notice an ongoing countdown to your exam. This is a really helpful way for you to stay on track and know how much longer you have until test day. It also shows you how consistent you have been with your MCAT habits over the last seven days. This is the green section on the dashboard. So as you can probably tell, the dashboard is the hub for all of your progress. Refer back here when you want to see how you're doing overall, whether that be how much content you have left to review, how your practice questions are going, or how consistent you've been with your habits, or if you just really want to see how many days until your exam. The dashboard is the spot for all of that. Now that we've discussed the main functions of the spreadsheet, let's go ahead and walk through the overall setup when you first download your own Blink copy. One thing to note before we jump in with setting up your version is that this is a Google Sheets download, so you must have a free Google account in order to access this spreadsheet. The spreadsheet will not work if you are offline, so in other words, if you download this as an Excel file, the content will not integrate properly and your dashboard will not update the way it should. So just make sure you're using this online via Google Sheets. So as you can see here, I am currently on the download that you will get from Etsy with the link to your template. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through what it looks like from start to finish of setting up your own spreadsheet. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and click on the link to your template here on this document. This will open up to your MCAT tracker. We did recently add a getting started page, so this is something that is new. If your sheet didn't have this, it's because we just recently added it. You can go ahead and read through this to get some insight, but I'll basically be explaining everything in this tutorial anyway. So now that you've clicked the link, you can go through all of your tabs here at the bottom and you'll see that your entire document is blank. So we have the getting started page with the guide. We have our dashboard. We have our habits content review, all of your different practice tabs for each subject. The very first step you're going to want to take with regards to setting up your own sheet is to make a copy. To do that, we're going to go here to the top left where it says file. We're going to click file and go ahead and click the fourth one right here, make a copy. It will prompt you to rename the document. So for me, I'll just name mine Sam's MCAT spreadsheet, but you can name yours whatever you would like. Um, once you decide on a name, you can go ahead and make a copy. So now it's the exact same thing that you saw before, but instead of it saying the title that it was previously, it'll now say whatever you decided to name it. Now that you have your own copy of the spreadsheet, you can go ahead and edit it as you wish. So let's go ahead and start with your testing information. That will be on the dashboard page up here in the gray where it says exam. This is actually the only section of the spreadsheet that you will edit directly on the dashboard. So the rest of these you'll edit in their own separate tabs and they will just interface into the dashboard as you change them in the other tabs. So for this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna input your date of your exam, the time of your exam and location of your exam. So for me, I will be testing in April. So I will be putting April 14th, 2023. And when I click enter, you'll see that my countdown interface is right here and my exam is 66 days away. Very exciting. <laughs> um, then you can go ahead and put your time and your location. If you wanna be more specific with the address, you totally can. So this is how you will add your exam information. The only thing that you are editing is your date, time, and location. You won't touch the countdown. That will automatically integrate when you add the date. Your exam countdown will continue updating as the days progress. So tomorrow this will say 65, the next day it'll say 64. Pretty self-explanatory, but just to make sure that you're aware, it should continue ticking down the days. Now that we have our exam date all set and our countdown is looking good, let's go ahead and add our habits. To do this, you can either click habits here 
directly on the dashboard, which will take you to the habits tab like this, or you can just click the habits tab on the bottom and that will also take you there. But you won't be typing anything in these boxes and you won't be typing anything here on the main page. It will all interface from your own habits page here. To add your habits, you're gonna go over here to this box that says this month's habits, and you'll go ahead and add whatever you want to track while you study for the MCAT. So I only track five habits. You have the option to track six, and this is your process, and the habits you choose are totally up to you, but this is where you will add them. So whatever you decide, you'll add your habits here, and you can go back to your dashboard, and you will see that they have updated here. You can continue customizing this section of the spreadsheet as well. So for me, my goal changes based on what habit it is. Let's just say, for example, it's still January and I want to do my Anki cards every day of January. So I'll leave that as 31. But maybe I want to do amino acids only once a week. In that case, I'm going to change my goal here to four instead of 31. Just to show you how this actually works, as you go through the days, you'll go ahead and just click on these boxes and a little check mark will appear if you did that habit. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I go through an entire month and I complete my goal. In this case, my goal for Anki cards is 31 days of January, which is every single day. Once we get to the end here, you will notice your progress updates and it'll say 100%. For amino acids, because my goal was only once a week, let's say I just wanna review amino acids on Sunday. You'll notice I'm already 50% through to my goal in terms of my progress, but I've done significantly less amino acid review than I have doing my Anki cards. And that's because I set the goal to only be once a week. So once I do four Sundays, I am at 100%. If I do another Sunday, I exceeded my goal and I've got 125%. But that's just a little in-depth of how you can customize your own habits and change your goal to be less or more depending on which habit you are tracking. Moving along, another thing I wanted to explain here is that from month to month, you'll see that all of the habits have pulled down into the following months. In order to change that, let's say it's February now and I'm all done with content review. So I'm not tracking if I'm being consistent with doing my content review because I finished. So instead of content review, I might want to change this habit. I can erase it and I might want to change it to practice exams. And maybe I want to do practice exams once a week, so I change this to 4 instead of 28. But just to show you, it won't change what you've done the month prior, so you can still see how you did that month. You can still see how your progress went and everything like that. Um, but starting in February, once you change that habit, you can now see and track this new habit of practice exams and no longer worry about content review. That is pretty much the gist of the habits section of the spreadsheet. So the next tab of the spreadsheet is the content review tab. This is the section where you will track all of your content review as you go through the topics that the MCAT covers. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like when it's filled out. I will link my website below. You can go ahead and navigate the demo on your own if you wish because it is available for just browsing if you're interested in doing that. Firstly, this is what content review looks like on the dashboard when it's filled out to some extent. You will see the percentage of topics completed up here at the top left of the content review section on the dashboard. The amount of topics left, it will interface some high yield topics to review. Um, you can kind of see where you're at in terms of the different concepts in the various MCAT sections. Cars is at the bottom here and in this section, you can see how many passages you've completed, your overall percentage on your passages, and then you can filter based on passage type. So right now, this is saying for double AMC passages, there's a 60% average, five total passages completed. When we change it to Jack Weston, you can see that they've done 14 passages for Jack Weston with a 70% overall average, and it will continue to change based on which you select. You could also select all types, and that will just show you your overall which you'll notice will be the same as you see here on the left. So this is what content review looks like on the dashboard. To actually track content review, you'll do that here on the content review tab. You'll see here that this is pretty filled out. Like I said, this is just a demo. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my blank spreadsheet to actually fill it out on here with you guys. Now that you've seen what a full content review tracking might look like. Let's go ahead and input some things on our own. To start, you're always going to need to put a date on this left column here. 
in order for it to interface on the dashboard. So that's important. Make sure there's always a date in this left column here. This spreadsheet is specifically set up for Kaplan review books. That's just because these are the books I'm using and this spreadsheet is what my boyfriend made me. So we worked together to basically divide the chapters based on their double AMC topics. And so if you happen to be using the Kaplan books, you're in luck. If you're not using the Kaplan books, don't worry at all. You can track based on topics. So these are all of the double AMC topics from the topic guidelines for each section. So for bio biochem, we have the chem phys topics, psych soch topics, over here. So as you go through, instead of putting that you did a certain chapter, you can just say, okay, I went over emotion and you can you can put it right there. But let's say you are reviewing by Kaplan chapter. You could do biochemistry chapter one. And just to show you, when you go to the dashboard, your completed percentage is 3% and you have 146 topics left to review if you did that chapter of content. Ignore this column completely if you don't have the Kaplan books and go to additional topics and just say, okay, I did amino acids today. You go to your dashboard and you'll notice you are 1% complete and you have 149 topics left. So that's kind of what you'll do if you don't have the Kaplan books. But moving along, I wanted to go ahead and show you this last column here of the content review section. So we have bio, biochem, chem, phys, psych soch and then the cars section over here on the right because i'm not reading the cars book we decided to set up this section a little differently we just went ahead and made it a passage tracker what you're going to do here is as you go through passages for cars you just go ahead and select what kind of passage you're doing here you can go ahead and reach out to us if you have another type of passage that you want included and we can customize your spreadsheet to add another drop down here but for right now this is kind of what I use, so this is what we have. But in order to track this, what you're gonna do is, let's say you do a Jack Weston passage, you just go ahead and hit Jack Weston, and then you're gonna do the amount of questions you got correct out of the total amount of questions for the passage, so five correct out of six, let's say. And then this tab is completely optional. Your car's information will interface on the dashboard without filling this date out, um, but if you want to put the date or the passage title or anything for your own liking, you can go ahead and put it here. So all you're going to do for your cars passages is just track them here on this right column as you do them and as you go through them. Pretty simple. When you go to the dashboard, you should see that we just tracked three passages. So you'll see three passages completed. One thing to note is that you need at least five passages in order for your bar graph to display here. So Let's go ahead and add two more just to show you what that looks like. Now that we've added two more, you will see that the bar graph displays because we have five passages. And then if you go to each individual, because we're not at five individually, your graph won't display. But once you get to five, it will display in the bar graph here. But that's kind of what it looks like and how you'll track the passages. And that is pretty much the gist of the content review tab. So the last part of the spreadsheet are the practice tabs for each of the subjects. All of these that say practice and then the subject down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the demo again just to show you what it looks like when it's actually filled out and kind of what your thought process can look like when going over questions. So here is the demo. Like I said, you have access to this. If you want to look at it for yourself and just kind of see what this could look like, you can go ahead and check out the demo. I'll have it linked below. But this is the practice tab section. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory overall. This is the section where you will track your practice questions. On the left here, we input the date. For me, it was January 11th. We have the option of doing UWorld or double AMC. If you have a different practice platform that you use, definitely let us know and we can add that option to the drop down menu if anyone else is interested. Right here on the third tab is the foundation. So this comes straight from the double AMC. They have a bunch of different foundations and you can just pick from the drop down which topic foundation you are reviewing that day. And then the topic you can kind of type in on your own. You can insert the question ID. If you're using something like UWorld, they have question IDs. So if I wanted to, I could go back to UWorld and type in this question ID and find the exact question. This is a good way to kind of keep track and stay organized. For question type, this is kind of whether or not you got the question correct or incorrect. We also have an option for I got it correct, but I took too long, uh, which is if you can see here, one of my main issues. <laughs> so you can say correct, no issues. Um, incorrect, you took a guess. It could either be that you got it right or got it wrong, but either way, if it's a guess, you, you can put that there. Um, and then if you were to get it wrong, you can put your reason. 
So if you notice here on the ones that I got wrong, for incorrect, I put logic error. So either logic error or content deficit. And that kind of helps you understand whether or not you have reviewed content well, or if you just had a little confusion while you were doing the question. Right here is the explanation, so you can kind of take it upon yourself to write what works for you. And then here we have on the right, to not miss in the future. So that's kind of an explanation of the practice tabs. You can do the exact same thing for all of the subjects. When you go to your dashboard, you can see your overall practice percentages. You can also see like what percent you are taking too long on, what percent you're getting correct, whether it's a content deficit or a logic error, just everything in one small place. So then you can see like, okay, I really need to focus on my content for behavioral, right? Because my reason for getting things wrong most of the time was a content deficit rather than a logic error. So maybe I really need to go over those concepts in the behavioral sciences section and make sure that they make sense. But this is a great way to see kind of how many questions have you reviewed, if you're being consistent, and how your averages are looking and why you're getting things correct or incorrect. That is the entire spreadsheet. I really hope that this is helpful for you guys and definitely leave a comment down below if you still have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them for you. As always, good luck studying and I will catch you in my next video, which will probably be a vlog. See you guys later. Good luck. Mm, crown, that's a crown.